Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to give you a walk around of our dirt bike trailer setup. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to pick up some ideas that you can use in your own trailer. So let's get started. Here's a setup. We have our 2020 F350 Dually pulling our eight and a half by 24 foot enclosed trailer. On the outside, I built a stand and placed a 65 gallon water tank that we purchased at Tractor Supply. I added a water pump that's on the switch inside and I added a water bib that's right above the V-nose of the trailer. These are set up to wash our hands and the bikes. I know I get this a lot. Edgar, why is it so high? That's way too much weight in the front. Well, I made it tall on purpose. I didn't want it to limit my turning ability. So I can literally jackknife the truck and trailer and it will still clear the tailgate. As the trailer sits with all the gear and a full water tank, I only have 1,800 pounds on the tongue. And the max tongue weight on the truck is 2,120 pounds. So we're good to go and she pulls well. Now, since this isn't an RV or a tour hauler, it doesn't have that traditional entryway door. Ours has an extra security latch on top of that black latch. It's cool and all, however, I had to add a bracket to secure that long handle to make sure no one locks us in. Enough talk about the outside, let's get inside. Welcome to what I like to call our second home. We haul our bikes and gear in here. If we stay at a track overnight, this is where we place our cots and sleeping bags. But wait a second, let's back up and I'll show you what we started with. On the walls and ceiling, I added two inch foam board insulation between the studs and half an inch insulation over the studs. After that, I covered the walls with three quarter inch plywood. I wanted to be able to attach heavy things to the wall without having the need to hit a stud every time. The three quarter inch plywood was perfect for this job. For the ceiling, I decided to go with a thinner quarter inch plywood since it was only going to be used to cover up the insulation and hold up some lights. We added some deck paint to the floor and some high quality exterior paint to the walls. All right, back to the good stuff. Here we have three heavy duty stackable storage bins that hold our boots and knee braces. They are secured to the wall with some screws and fender washers. These bins are available at Lowe's. This pipe assembly here is what we use to hang our locks when they are not in use. Here we have a fridge that has worked perfectly so far considering it isn't an RV or trailer specific fridge. We have a battery charger from Walmart. It only charges the battery when we are hooked up to shore power or a generator. Our inverter kicks on when we disconnect from shore power or that generator. It is perfect because it provides power to the entire trailer while we're driving from the house to the track. We have a microwave for those hot pockets on cold nights and a fan to circulate some air. We have two stacked toolboxes that are secured to the floor and to the wall. The cabinets that you see here are from Lowe's and are Gladiator brand steel garage cabinets. We have our electrical panel and transfer switch, along with cabinets and a few more storage bins made out of wire, mesh, and wood. Here you see I made a bracket to store our kids one wheel, that way it's not rolling around during transport. We have a simple roost guard holder, our electrical heater, and above that we have a TV, and we have empty space here for future storage. Uh, in the little bucket we have dirty air filters, and above it to the left, this is the way that we decided to store all of our gear. Um, it's just screw pipe, three quarter inch pipe mounted to the wall. Um, and you can never be safe enough. We have a carbon monoxide alarm there as well. Underneath all of our jerseys, we have more baskets that hold gloves. Here you see a helmet, jacket, uh, and socks. In this corner here, we have miscellaneous items. It's almost like our junk corner. We have our practice gate, a water hose, pressure washer, a homemade tire changer. And the way you see the trailer right now, it's how it is when, we're, when we are uh, moving, right? During transport, we have our generators um, locked down. And with scrap wood, I made a helmet holder here at an angle. It holds all of our helmets. The bottom row is low enough for the girls to be able to pull their helmets whenever they need it or whatnot. Now, here's my fire pit. The opening is facing the wall. That's how I decided to secure it. We have a fan, a ride-on uh, stand, and this mini super quiet air compressor from Harbor Freight. 
this stand and all my other stands are hung up using these hooks. I made these hooks out of this multi-tool hanger that I got from Lowe's. I cut them in half, put them in a vise, and bent them to shape using a hammer. They are easy enough to form to fit to whatever you're hanging, but they're sturdy enough to hang whatever you need them for. We have our brooms for concrete starts and to clean the trailer. Here we have a small tent and this is where we store our cots. Above it we have some storage areas for some goggles, some tubes, and spare parts. We have a small table, large table, that chain is there just to give people a heads up not to hit their head on that stand. And again all these three stands are being held up by those custom made hooks that I told you about. Um, could I have just left them up there on the hook by itself? Sure. but. As a safety, you know, the, the trailer jumps around so much that put it on a hook and strap it down with a bungee cord or a, or a different tie down. Here you just see uh, another example of how I use this hook, right, and how I bent it just enough um, to be able to put it as high as I can. I figured if it's on the wall, it's not on the ground, you know, getting in the way or kicking it around um for the longest that's what happened to this red stand this my stand we just put it underneath my bike and just you know shift it around it got in people's way so figured put it on the wall and it's good to go right next to it we have a abc tent from amazon it's 10 by 20 very sturdy uh at a good price too we have another little outlet there this little wire basket holds our clean filters after i wash them i put them there so they could dry up we have a step stool for the girls to get into the cabinets for all their 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 little snacks and in a nutshell that is an overview of how we have set up the trailer now let's take a second and take a look at how the bikes are strapped down and what i used to hold them in place the dirt bikes are placed at a 45 degree angle which gives us a bit of a walkway here on the right if i needed to pull out the kawasaki that's close to the ktm I can leave the bikes as is and use a walkway to bring the bike in and out. I also have them spread out just enough to give me room for those oil and air filter changes. If I needed to adjust the chain, I can keep the bike strapped down, throw a lift stand under the bike and adjust the chain. Four out of our six bikes are chalked to the wall like this. It is a dual arm tool hook and a single extract piece. I went with the hook that has a rubber coating on it to prevent any possible scratches. The hook is intended to be used with the bend going up, however I saw it as an accident waiting to happen, so I decided to keep them facing down. It gets the job done, I can remove the hook if I needed to, and best of all, it is cheap. Both items cost about $21 at Lowe's. The setup works for all of our bikes, small 50s all the way up to our 250s. The other two bikes use the DC Cargo motorcycle wheel chocks. These are purpose built and were $60 each without the extract piece. The last thing I want to talk about is lights. Our lights are plugged into a quad box. I have one of the four outlets on a switch specifically for the lights. These lights are linkable LED shop lights from Harbor Freight and you can link up to eight of them together. Well guys, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you were able to pick up a thing or two that you can use in your setup. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.